Hey guys, welcome back to the Shipmate YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to be discussing freight classes. We're going to do a basic overview of how freight class works, how you should understand it, and how understanding it can help your business. Freight classes are established by the National Motor Freight Classification, and they come in classes 50 to 500, and there are really only 18 freight classes. Uh, 50 being the lowest freight class, 500 being the highest, with 50 being the easiest, cheapest freight to ship, and 500 being the more difficult freight to ship, therefore the more expensive freight to ship. Um, when establishing your freight class or determining your freight class, there are really four factors that play into that classification. The first is density and value. So uh, the more dense a shipment is, generally the cheaper it's going to be to ship, and the less dense, the more expensive. Uh, to put this in real terms, it's essentially much cheaper to ship a, a standardized pallet of bricks than it would be to ship a standardized pallet of uh, ping pong balls or feathers, right? Uh, this is because uh, freight carriers find it more desirable to ship a heavier, denser, easier to handle load than a less dense load that's going to take up more space on the truck and is a bit more difficult to handle. The second factor that will influence your freight class would be stowability. This is how easy is it to store and move your product. So you can think of a situation where you know, moving a standardized pallet, 40 by 48 pallet, stacked nicely, wrapped neatly, is going to be much easier than moving a irregular pallet or uh, a broken pallet. Uh, Non-standard pallet is going to be more difficult for a carrier to move. This is going to influence the stowability of that shipment. It's going to therefore increase the freight class of that shipment. It's going to be more expensive to send. The third factor that influences your shipment is handling. So... Most LTL shipments are able to be loaded directly on and off the truck with mechanical equipment. This is what carriers want. They want to be able to put pallets right on and off the truck with a, a regular pump jack or with an electric pallet jack. And if this is not a possibility for them and if there's more handling involved, the freight class is, a, is going to be higher and the cost of shipping those goods is going to be higher as well. So if at all possible, you definitely want to consult the National Motor Freight Classification to determine the correct packaging for the product that you'll be shipping and to find the best, cheapest possible way to ship that product. The fourth factor that's going to determine the freight class of any LTL shipment is going to be liability. Uh, and this is a pretty straightforward factor. So cheap goods that are difficult to break and are not likely to be stolen are going to be much cheaper to ship than high value goods or very fragile goods that are going to be likely to be broken on the back of a truck. So to put this in real terms for you, it's going to be much cheaper, again, to ship a pallet of bricks, which are not very likely to be stolen, not very likely to be broken on the truck, um, and are essentially very low liability, than it would be to ship a pallet of uh, packets of gold dust or electronics, uh, or anything that's got a, a high likelihood of being taken off of the pallet, or a high likelihood of, of being broken if a truck hits a bump or, or uh, hits a, a sharp turn and you know that pallet hits the side of the truck or, or even in some instances falls over. Uh, so you know, it's, it's important to understand that in shipping more expensive goods and shipping more valuable goods, you're very likely to incur you know, a higher freight class and higher charges because of the, the value of your goods or the fragility of your goods. So if you have an easy to, an easy to store, easy to load pallet that's very unlikely to be broken, essentially the main factor that's going to establish your freight class at that point is going to be the density of your shipment. Now, how do you establish the density of your shipment? Well, it's relatively straightforward. The first thing you need to do is accurately measure your shipment. You're going to need the height, the length, and the width of your shipment as well as the weight in order to establish the density. The length, width, and height should be taken in inches and the weight should be taken in pounds because we're going to be trying to establish the pounds per square foot of your shipment. So 
Once you have an accurate measurement of the height, the length, and the width, you're going to multiply each one of those together. So you're going to multiply the length and the width and take that product and multiply it by the height of your shipment. This is going to give you a number, which you should then divide by the number 1,728. The reason you divide by 1,728 is because this is the number of cubic inches in a cubic foot. Once you divided by 1,728, you've then got the number of, of cubic inches in your shipment, and you can take the number of pounds that you took as the weight of your shipment and divide it across of the value that you've just established. This is going to give you the number of pounds per square foot in your shipment, which is essentially the density. Once you have this density, it's relatively straightforward to get an understanding of your freight class by simply going online and searching the values. The best resource to find freight class is the National Motor Freight Classification, which is easily accessible online. You can find their documentation on their website, and we highly recommend you use this in understanding the freight class for any shipment that you plan to send. Another way to establish the freight class is to provide all of these variables the length, width, and height of your shipment, as well as the weight to a freight broker, and to allow that freight broker to, to establish the density for you. Uh, this is always a good option if you work with a freight broker because they're going to have a lot more experience and understanding of the freight industry, and they'll be able to fit your freight within the best possible freight class before you ship it. They'll also be able to understand the packaging requirements for your shipment, and if you ask them, they'll be able to tell you what kind of packaging would be best to put your contents in. Sometimes it's cheaper to ship inside of a crate. Sometimes it's cheaper to ship on a pallet. Sometimes there are certain packing requirements for, for specific commodities that you might not know about. And so before you finish prepping your shipment, you might want to seek out the advice of an experienced freight broker to get some guidance on how you should be packaging your shipment before you book it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Do Bill a favor, go ahead and smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, tell your friends about us, and we look forward to talking to you next time on the Shipmate YouTube channel.